So we can now look at this in terms of elasticity and the simple rule or simple idea, which is actually common sense, it's intuitive, is that the uh, uh, if we look at the demand curve for foreigners, it's relatively inelastic, and so these are the these buyers are less price sensitive, and so we're going to charge them a higher price. And if we look at the, the market for um, the local people, well, their demand curve is more relatively elastic. Uh, they're more price sensitive. They've got alternatives. They've got other, pl- other things they can do. And so this is the group that we're going to be charging a lower price to. Uh, now, the, the key question, of course, is how to identify which group. Would you put them in the, the group on the, uh, let's call them the F group on the left-hand side, or do you put them in the right, uh, the group, the L group, the local type people on the right-hand side? The case of tourists is relatively simple. I mean, people with a foreign passport, people with a local passport, uh, and or maybe it's the language or something else, you can quickly identify the two groups. But the real trick with uh, uh, price discrimination is to find another way to, to identify the two groups. Quick point before we uh, look at uh, how we identify these two groups, I want to make plain three important, uh, three necessary conditions for practicing price discrimination. Uh, the first one, of course, is that the firm must possess some kind of monopoly power. That means to say there must be a, 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 an elastic demand curve. It can, the firm can't be pay, facing a perfectly elastic demand curve. In other words, it can't be a price taker. So there, there must be some, uh, must be partially inelastic, let's say. Uh, second point is that there's no arbitrage possibility. So that means to say that one group, the, the group that would be buying like the local, uh, the local uh, passport holders can't buy at the lower price and then sell to the, the people at the higher price. Or another way of putting it too is if we look at the museum examples that the, uh, the, the local passport holder can't go up to the ticket counter, buy two tickets and then give it to their foreign friend. Uh, and then the third point, of course, is that the uh, the firm must have some knowledge of the demand curve. It would have to be able to figure out who is in which group. One of the points about this is that the uh, that f- what what appears frequently to be uh, price discrimination. That, that is to say, you 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 seem to observe that there are either two prices for the same same good or service, or it appears as if they're selling in some way. Um, uh, the, the same product to two different groups at the same price frequently turns out to be not price discrimination. And if think of it this way, is that uh, local people may pay a lower price for taking a taxi than uh, than foreigners. But if you stop and think about it, taxi is a very competitive business, uh, and 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 uh, in some places it depends. Uh, but uh, and it also may be just more difficult to uh, to provide service for a foreigner. They frequently don't speak the local language. They get lost. It's more difficult for the taxi driver to know how to get to point A and point B and bring the person to the wrong place and so on. So uh, it, in that sense, the cost is higher. So be cautious about seeing price discrimination where it doesn't exist. Let's take a look at a very simple example. Uh, this is what I noticed when I was traveling in Southeast Asia, uh, speaking about foreigners and locals. But uh, here we've got uh, the two two groups. We've got the foreign group, and we've got the, keep in mind that the uh, that's a relatively I- more inelastic demand. So we'd expect the foreigners to pay, call it DF, demand curve high, as a higher price. And then uh, we've got the, uh, the, the, the local group, let's call it group L, with the more elastic demand, and they would be charged uh, a lower price. If you look at the... The ticket, this was for a bridge, to cross over a bridge. If you look at it, you'll see that the pedestrians, I think here, were paying, uh, these are people without a, just going on foot, would be paying 400 kip, and uh, this is the currency of uh, Laos. And uh, the motorcycle people pay about twice as much, as about 10,000. 10, um, which What this illustrates is that uh, sellers don't require a sophisticated knowledge of economics or marketing or anything to understand the, the, the advantages and the ability to price discriminate. This is a, a visual, visual example of it. Um, so let's consider some more examples. To answer maybe the question of why cinema is expensive at the popcorn, but keep in mind I've got the the group that is relatively inelastic and uh, on the top, and the one with more uh, more elastic demand on the lower uh, lower side. So the high price we'd anticipate would be on the high group, business class tickets as opposed to economy class tickets. Well, of course, at the same time, uh, business class they have wider seats, uh, they have more advantages, easier to change the ticket, and so on. So these are more costly to the airline. But it's likely that in this case also that they're practicing uh, price discrimination. 
uh, one way to view it too is that the people traveling in business class typically are spending somebody else's money, so that's why they can afford to be, in a sense, to be uh, have an inelastic demand curve. Whereas when you're spending your own money, you tend to be uh, shop around more and look look for a cheaper deal. Uh, let's consider another example: uh, people who clip coupons. Uh, there's an example too, where in effect it's exactly the same good, uh, but once every say once every five or six seven weeks, uh, a, a product is on sale in a grocery store. And uh, what that means is that the, um, in effect, the the people that are clip coupons, those kind of people, we're, keep in mind, we're trying to figure out a way to put people into two different groups here. And so the, uh, the grocery stores can identify the people who are in group L, let's say, uh, by offering these coupons. Uh, there's a lot of other people, uh, for example, myself, uh, I don't bother to look at these coupons, I don't really care. Um, and so as a result, uh, I pay typically the higher price. Now, keep in mind, the Group L people uh, are uh, are going to be shopping on that one week in six or seven when you can use the coupon. Uh, the, uh, the other people, m- by chance, may get the lower price, but typically won't. And then we come to the cinema example. If you think about it, going to the uh, the cinema in the evening, it's, uh, it's the price of a ticket to get in plus the, a, a, a bag of popcorn. So it's, let's call it $10 plus $10 for the popcorn. That's 20 bucks to go to the cinema. Um, the people who don't eat popcorn, well, they only pay $10 because they're only going to buy the ticket price. Uh, so in a group, in, a, in that sense, for some reason, whatever, group, uh, the, the people in group, let's call it group F, happen to be the people that eat popcorn. And they're the people that are willing to pay a higher price or have a more inelastic demand for cinema than the people uh, that are in group L that don't eat popcorn. Uh, it, it happens to be by chance. It, it could easily be the other way. Mm-hmm.